Thank you very much for having me. Um, for, for quite some time I was wondering what I should talk about and I thought if we really have to redefine the status quo, nothing else can redefine it than the COVID-19 pandemic. So what are the things that I've learned and how re did COVID-19 redefine the status quo? I think the first thing that it did was that it taught us to be prepared for the unexpected. That was the first lesson that I learned. And this is because we had this virus which was causing an outbreak in December 2019 in the Wuhan region of China. And we had a first case in January of 2020. But at, at that point in time, many people felt that this is going to be a mild outbreak in developing countries, we already have good amount of immunity because of recurrent infection, and it's not going to be a large number of cases. Yet, when we were looking for it at the All Institute of Medical Sciences, I thought it's better that we prepare for it rather be, than be underprepared. So during the lockdown, when we had our trauma center, which was shut down because there was hardly any trauma, because there was no traffic, we converted that trauma center into a COVID hospital, a National Cancer Institute, which was still coming up, it's 700 bedded, we converted that into a COVID hospital. And in the first few days, a lot of people came and told me, what you're doing is not right. This is going to be a mild outbreak. And I felt for some time that they may be right, because we had few, very few cases coming in, uh, in the first few days. But then with the first wave, the second wave, we had this huge surge and actually we ran out of beds. So I think one should prepare for the unexpected and that is very, very important. I'll give you another example during those times where how you should prepare for the unexpected. We suddenly had a call from the government that, you know, there is a group, a religious group which has been found, 100 or more odd people staying in one place and possibly they have COVID and you have to admit all of them. So we had bus loads, three or four buses of pe people who were picked up by the police and brought that they have to be admitted. Overnight, how do you suddenly create a facility for 100 beds in the early part of the pandemic? And this was a religious group. There were people even from outside the country. There were people from Russia, from Malaysia, from Southeast Asia. And then we really converted one of our hostels, which was just ready, a nurse's hostel, into a COVID care center. What we did was we made the ground floor, the first floor, the ground floor was the parking, the first floor into the doctors, the, the paramedics, the nurses, uh, waiting area, their sleeping room, their medicine uh, uh, area. And above that, all of it became a COVID care center. And these 100 people came in buses and we had we admitted them overnight and all of them turned out to be COVID positive. Unfortunately, one of them died because he was a diabetic and he didn't inform us that he was actually on, on a diabetic and he was not taking any medication. So he had what we call diabetic ketoacidosis and he collapsed just when he came out of the bus and wearing PPEs, our doctors rushed him to the ward hospital, but he had severe pneumonia and died because of a secondary complication. So I think the first lesson that I learned was prepare for the unexpected and have a plan in that really you may or you may or may not need it, but you must prepare for it. The second lesson was teamwork and everyone in the organization matters. When we started working and started this pandemic, Every day in the morning, and I've been doing that for more than two and a half years, we would have a meeting at 8.30. We started off in our conference hall, and then we moved it to the auditorium because we would have everyone who was involved as far as the pandemic was concerned who wanted to come for that meeting to come for that. So we had not only our senior physicians, but our residents, our nursing officers, our technicians, even the um, other staff, the contract staff, the guards, their representative would come there and they would then be involved in our decision making and that really helped us 
to build the morale because everyone felt they were involved and when you have a re- outbreak of a virus about which no you don't know really anything about it's very important to keep everyone's morale high so and the other advantage was you were able to get ideas from everyone and i'll tell you this that it's not the people at the top sometime who give you the brightest ideas it's the people who are actually working at a ground level who will give you practical solutions for the problems that you have whether it's converting one area into a donning area a doffing area how do you segregate patient paths who are covid negative uh, and patients who are covid positive so that they don't mix each other so a lot of that came in from the residents from the other staff rather than the senior doctors and sometimes of course you have criticism also our residents got up and said they are not happy with the ppe the quality is not good they want it to be changed the n95 mask should be given to everyone at that point in time we were giving n95 mask to those who were working in the covid areas and a surgical mask to those who were working in the non covid areas but i realized that it's very difficult to segregate and despite the the official orders we purchased and gave n95 to ev to every staff member of our because it was important to keep them protected so that's the second lesson that i learned that you have to have teamwork the third thing was the right person for the right job when we st- and in for finding the right person for the right job age and seniority doesn't matter you need to have a person who's dedicated and willing to do that job and i think that is also very very important and when we started all this we started our man- hospital management the the all india institute of medical sciences had ha- is an, an academic institute so we had the teaching program that we wanted to run we had a mandate from the government that you have to start webinars educate people not only at aims but across all medical colleges in terms of management of covid-19 you have to also have uh, webinars for the general public and therefore we had to have people who were dedicated and who could spend time to start making these special talks webinars for the lay person and this is a pandemic which is evolving so you t- you had to continue your education on a regular basis so twice a week from the from the government side we would have what we call creation of centers of excellence which was state wise regional wise once a week i would ho- have a talk with all various hospitals which was called the eicus in terms of talking to them about how do you manage covid-19 as the management strategies kept evolving and at the same time you had to be up to date in terms of what is happening in today's research and as far as the literature was concerned but you had to choose the right people who could do the academic part who could do the training part who could do the uh, patient management part and who could actually be involved as far as testing was concerned and they don't have to be the senior most people sometimes it's the person who is more involved at a much junior level who can deliver rather than someone who is much more senior so you have to be able to choose the right person give them the freedom to work then you just need to monitor to see that they're doing it properly often you would have a person who would come and says you know i've got this idea that we are running short of staff we had to do, we had to run the hospital both covid and non covid care with the same number of doctors and nurses so he, what this person did was he said why don't we convert our main area into a screening area where we before admission we decide on the management and of, of, the, of the patient we make all the charts so that the workload in the ward becomes less and the the, the less the, the, num- uh, the number of staff people there who are less can also manage the patients so we actually had a reception area where patients were seen they were put an iv line was put they were started on medication the blood pressure saturation was taken and then they were sent to the ward where the the doctors or the nurses who were really having a tough time could manage them without having to do all of this again because it was already done and noted and treatment had already been started so again i think that is the other lesson that i learned that you have to be really allowing the right person to do the right thing the next lesson that i learned was that you have to also be able to innovate and innovation becomes very very important as one evolves in life and one has these new things and we started with a lot of things in the early days i don't think many of you would remember 
but there was this huge issue of shortage of PPEs. India does not manufacture PPEs in a large amount. The personal protection equipment actually gets imported from China. So most of it was coming from China and we had a situation where for some time there was an issue of there's going to be a shortage of personal protection equipment. How are we going to manage uh, keeping our healthcare workers protected? So then we started saying how can we innovate? And then we came up with an idea, why can't we recycle our PPEs? So what we started thinking of was, if you wear a PPE and it's in good condition, why don't we just take it, clean it, disinfect it in a way that we know that the virus can no longer survive, package it and then reuse it unless it, unless it gets torn or it's stained with blood. So we started doing that. We, we did a research on that. I got a group of people together. They put bacteria spores on PPEs and uh, put it in a room which was fumigated and they showed that the virus would not survive here. And therefore we took a, the used PPEs which were in good condition, cleaned them, hung them there with masks in that room and were able to show that this actually worked. And we started recycling PPEs. After, later on there was no issue because it, India started manufacturing PPEs. But for the first few days, Th when there was this whole issue of shortage of PPEs, we actually were able to innovate and do that. Similarly, when we had the huge surge of NUP cases, again, when there was an issue of rapid testing, a, a large amount of kit was imported, which was actually antibody testing kits. So you have the virus, which has the antigen, which tells you about the virus, and you have the antibodies, which are produced and tells you about the own bodies, antibodies which are produced against the virus. This kit did not work. This was actually shown to be useful, but when it was tried in, in the periphery in Rajasthan, they found it was not working and it was actually discarded. Then we, we were still looking for something and we got a company which was making an antigen kit, the rapid antigen testing kit. When we wanted to look at it, we were told that this is already a failed path, don't go down this path. But again, when we started testing it and we did a small study where we looked at it in COVID positive patients, we did the rapid antigen test and we did the RT-PCR test and found that in a large number of patients, both were positive and we found good concordance. We even did it in a blinded manner so that the person testing did not know what the result was. And I found it was very useful, especially if your viral load was high. The test did not do very well if the viral load was less, but if your viral load was high, it was definitely positive and a positive test definitely pointed it out. It took me a long time to convince a lot of people in the government that the rapid antigen test does work and we must accept it because of the fiasco that had happened with the antibody testing. But then that became the standard of care and now we have a large number of rapid antigen testing. But I think it was something that helped, as helped us a lot. As a matter of fact, during the peak of the second wave, when we were worried that how are we going to test so many people, because RT-PCR test has a turnaround time, and you, can't, you can only do a limited number of samples, the rapid antigen test helped us so much that the RT-PCR testing actually came down because so many were getting positive out of, uh, because of the rapid antigen test that we didn't have to do the RT-PCR test. And this also helped us to segregate patients. In the beginning, we had actually three areas, COVID positive, COVID suspect, and COVID negative. Anyone who had symptoms of COVID but was still waiting for his test result would be in a COVID suspect area. And then if he was COVID negative, he would go to the COVID negative area. If he was COVID positive, he would go to the COVID positive area. But it was not a right thing because you were then mixing people who were COVID positive with people who were suspected to be COVID but turned out to be COVID negative. And that was not a right thing to do, but this is how things were being managed. The rapid antigen test actually helped change all of that because it gave you a result in 15 minutes and you could e quickly decide that in the emergency that this patient is COVID positive, he goes to the COVID hospital, he's negative, he goes to the non-COVID hospital. So I think innovation is the other important thing that you need to keep in mind. And finally, the other comment that, the other thing that I learned was that question everything. We had a situation where we had an infodemic along with the pandemic. And the infodemic was 
that you had information floating around on social media which really created a lot of panic people felt that this virus could spread even if you ate something if you read the newspaper or if you uh, sort of uh, got vegetables from the market and all sorts of things were done and countering that also was very important so the other final lesson that i learned was that you must question everything and look at the science behind it rather than just what is there as far as the infodemic is concerned so these were the lessons that i think i learned from the pandemic which i think are very very useful starting from the basic issue of being able to innovate have uh, be prepared for the un unexpected and choose the right person for the right job and also uh, involve everyone you have to have a team as far as working an outbreak is concerned thank you very much for your time thank you <laughs>